And that's where you come in. That's why I work so hard for you. I represent the greatest state in the union. I do. There's no way to Five and a half million strong. You know, we, we're great in what we do. And when I think about what Maryland is, Maryland is the home to some of the greatest federal assets that the world envies. The home of the National Institutes of Health, of FDA, the National Institutes of Standards, the Mothership, the National Security Agency. <laughs> represent these great institutions. But it's the institutions that help America be great. And then their work that they do, particularly in the area of research, that comes up with the new ideas, the new knowledge, that hopefully we can move into new products. And then we have a great university system. And by the way, I think we owe our governor a round of applause and our general assembly for what they've done for our university system. So when we look at our great federal agencies, some people might be surprised to learn that in three of our federal agencies, we have three civil servants that are Nobel Prize winners at NIH, at Goddard, at the Space Telescope Institute. Our universities are legendary, Hopkins and University of Maryland, for winning Nobel Prizes. But for me and for my state, I not only want to win the Nobel Prizes, I'm going to work with my private sector to make sure we win the markets. And that's what we need to talk about. taking those wonderful new ideas and turning them into products that we can sell to our own people to benefit their lives, to keep a safer country and a stronger economy, and also be able to sell them around the world. We're the home to biotech, infotech, cybertech, space tech, you name tech, and we've got it. <laughs> to make sure we continue to do it that way. I believe as a United States Senator, though, in being your advocate, the best advocate is not the one who talks, but the best advocate who's one who listens. And that's why, in the last several weeks, as we've worked on FDA reform, working with the able assistance of the Maryland Tech Council and its senior leadership team, as we worked on FDA reform, I traveled the state holding roundtables to listen to the life science community. Tell me, I said, how does government help? How does government hurt? When should we get the hell out of the way? And when do you need a robust, muscular government? And they spoke up and they spoke out. I took your ideas back to Congress. I wanted to go beyond the memo, beyond the congressional hearing. I wanted to take it right into legislation so that we have FDA reform that you can rely on, and at the same time, we have regulation without strangulation. So that we have an FDA that helps you move your life science products into clinical practice with the FDA gold standard that enables you to sell around the world. Well, I'm happy to say that working on a bipartisan basis, yesterday, the United States Senate Health and Education Committee passed unanimously on a voice vote the FDA reform package, and it's heading to the Senate floor. We're going to get the job done. You're going to know what you can count on. And we show you. I could not have done it without you, and now we're looking ahead to cyber legislation and others that we will be working on. But let me conclude by saying this. I, again, want to thank you not only for the award, but I want to thank you for what you do every day. We have a safer country because of you. We have a stronger economy because of you. And we need each other. And I want you to know that you can count on me to continue to look at public policies that generate innovation, to continue to support strong public research, to make sure we have a tax code that supports innovation, 
like making the research and development tax credit permanent, protects your intellectual property, and promotes exports. These are the kinds of things I want to work on. And at the end of the day, I want to just say it's about the United States of America. I go around and talk to a lot of people and they wring their hands about China. Recently in a conversation with Secretary Albright, she said this to a group where we were appearing together. We can't stop China. We can only stop ourselves if we stop innovating and if we stop doing these important public policies. And I want you to know I pledge, as part of this Advocate of the Year, that I think we need in Congress to be more of the red, white, and blue party. When I take my oath, when I'm sworn into the Congress, I don't take it to a political party. I don't take it to a platform at a political convention. I take my oath to the United States of America, one nation, united, indivisible, and that's what we need to do. We need to start to check our party hats at the door. We need to start to come together and find that sense of center, just like we did in biotech legislation. If the United States comes together and puts country first, we can do it. And I want you to know we can do it. God bless you.